Welcome to the 10 day trend that takes us to the end of 2022. But the main focus is understandably, I hope, going to be around the Christmas period. And, and one of the main reasons for that is because that's where we have the biggest uncertainty at the moment. That's not necessarily what we want to hear, but it's the way the weather goes sometimes. So let's take a look at the bigger picture. The jet stream for most of December has been well to the south uh, across Spain and Portugal. In recent days, it's shifted a little bit further north and that kind of track will continue for the next few days. The jet stream drifting in across southern parts of the UK. And as a result, it will be bringing with it the milder air. We've seen that jump in temperatures over the weekend and that will continue, that milder air uh, to be pushed along by the jet stream, certainly across the southern half of the UK. However, it is really just across the south because further north, colder air is pushing in. So we're going to have this north-south split as we go through the next few days in the run-up to Christmas. It'll be turning colder across the north and also a little bit drier because that jet stream is going to be taking in low pressure systems and weather fronts bringing in a lot of cloud and outbreaks of rain across the south. But further north, it is going to be a little bit drier. So that's the setup in the run up to Christmas, a north south split. Mist and fog could actually be the biggest hazard for traveling in the run up to Christmas across the south. There will be some rain at times, mild here, turning colder once more further north with sunny spells by day and some showers. What about the Christmas weekend itself? Well, as I hinted at at the start, there is uncertainty, more so than usual, actually, and it's all down to this area of low pressure. It's drifting in during the course of Christmas Eve. The isobars are squeezing together, suggesting it, it could turn quite windy, particularly on Christmas Eve nights. But what this is also going to do is waft the milder air further north. So it's mild for the next few days in the south, turning colder across the north. But as this low arrives during during Christmas Day, well, the milder air spreads right across the UK, leading to a fairly mild start to Christmas Day. However, will it last? Here we have a cold front, and that will then, it looks like, drift its way back across the country at some point during Christmas Day. And as it does so, look at this, the cold air whoosh coming back south. So the mild air winds out temporarily. The big question mark is the timing of the return of this cold air. And that is to do with the shape and position of this low pressure, exactly how intense it is. And that, in turn, is related to how it interacts with the jet stream. Now, the jet stream is pretty active, but actually to the south, and it's not really picking up this low pressure system, but it is being forced along and it is intensifying actually by this smaller branch of the jet stream in from the northwest. And it's that subtle shift, that subtle interaction with the jet stream that will determine the exact shape and position of this low into Christmas Day. And that is really important about the timing of when that cold air returns, because not all the computer models are agreeing, as we shall see. The Met Office model, as we've just seen, has that low. This is the frame at midday on Christmas Day, just to the north of the UK, with most of the country in the green, so most of the country in the mild air. And so actually, the, the, the UK Met Office um, computer model intensifying that low, suggesting there could be some very strong wind, winds around it. However, if we take a look at the European model for the same time frame, midday on Christmas Day, notice it's broadly similar. It still has low pressure up to a similar position, up to the north of the UK, but it's less intense. The ice bars aren't as close together, and the milder air is right across the UK rather than uh, most places. It's not really pushing back into the northwest. However, the American model, looks more like this. Again, below in a, in a similar position, but the colder air has already started to tuck back in across Northern Ireland into parts of Northern England and Scotland by midday on Christmas Day. In all these scenarios, it is still mild across the south, but the question mark is just how intense that low is and therefore the knock-on effect when the colder air returns from the northwest. And each of those models suggesting something slightly different with the Met Office one kind of in between the European and the American model. Now, that's just looking at one, three computer models, just running them once. What's more useful, as you'll know if you watch the 10 day trend, is to run computer models many, many times. And then we get more of a, a probabilistic forecast. But 
The interesting thing about that is that uh, when we look at the confidence in the forecast, when we run the model many times, there is a real dip here which aligns with Christmas Day. So greens are when we're confident in the forecast and the reds uh, are when confident drops off. And you can see a big dip there, which is not what you want to see, as I say, on such a big day when there's a lot of attention. But that is just the way of the weather sometimes. So yes, the confidence in the forecast for Christmas Day at this stage is lower than usual. But what we can say is that most places will start mild and certainly in the south it is likely to stay that way on Christmas Day. It will be turning colder during Christmas Day and into Boxing Day, which will open the door for the possibility of some snow showers as that cold air arrives. But the timing of that, that's the thing we need to nail down over the next few days. So, white Christmas or not? Well, as we've seen from that, it's pretty unlikely. But with that colder air coming into the northwest, there will be some flakes of snow. And it only takes one flake of snow to fall between midnight and midnight and Christmas Day. And you can say you've had a white Christmas. Now, this is showing the probabilities of seeing a centimetre of snow or more uh, across the UK on the 25th. And you can see... The most likely scenario is that parts of Western Scotland with the probabilities of 50-60% uh, of seeing a flake of snow. And again, just has to be one flake of snow falling during that 24-hour period. Most places, that probability is next to zero. For Boxing Day, however, the probabilities have increased even more so across uh, Western Scotland and down towards Northern Ireland, Northwest England. Again, probably mostly over the hills here at this stage. But uh, even further south, you can just pick out the slightly green shading, the probabilities have increased a little bit. And that in part is to do with the possibility that, yes, the colder air will be in place by Boxing Day, but these weather fronts in the south, they could just be a little bit further north. And if they clash with the colder air, well, it could bring some snow in places. But that's the big question mark. I say the timing of that colder air and then whether we see any wintry precipitation, any sleet and snow coming in, most likely across the northwest, but just the hints possibly across the south, something to keep an eye on for Boxing Day here. So that's the Christmas period. As I said, unfortunately, a bit more uncertainty than usual, but that's just the way the weather is sometimes. Now, what happens after that? Well, that's all tied in with what's going across the United States. Look at this. This is a really powerful winter storm developing over the next couple of days. That's going to bring all sorts of problems to the United States and Canada. People traveling for Christmas, wild winds and exceptionally cold conditions. And that in itself, this very cold air driving south, is pepping up the jet stream, which is helping to spin up that low pressure, which will, as I say, bring all kinds of problems. Heavy snowfall, freezing rain, gusty winds and significant wind chill. The impact for the UK is that as that cold air sinks south, hits the warm air that doesn't really shift, we get a contrast which drives the jet stream, empowers the jet stream even more. And this highly invigorated jet stream will then, it looks like, spread off from the eastern seaboard of the United States out into the Atlantic to perhaps switch up our weather patterns as we go through next week during Boxing Day and into next week. In fact, if we look beyond and into Wednesday, then it looks like the pattern's going to be pretty similar when we take a look at the jet stream, this angry looking jet stream coming off the eastern seaboard of the US and Canada. And it's back a little further north where it has been compared to uh, recent times. And this is a kind of more classic position for the jet stream and those uh, whitey pink colours you can see in there suggesting the core of that jet really quite lively. And that is like to be a breeding ground for areas of low pressure and they'll get pushed up towards the UK. So what that means is for between Christmas and New Year, the weather patterns are likely to be pretty changeable. We're going to see the potential for low pressure systems bringing wet and windy spells with brief colder spells in between. Plenty going on, as I said, uh, and particularly over that Christmas period. So please, please make sure you stay up to date with the latest weather forecast. And please make sure you're prepared for anything that may come, especially if you're hitting the roads over the uh, Christmas period. There's lots of advice about how to prepare your car and your home for the winter period if you search for the hashtag weather ready across social media.